Hello there. Thank you for joining me today as we continue our series on Join the Revolution. Over the past few weeks, we have been looking at ways to be known as Jesus' disciples rather than Christians. In John 13, verse 35, Jesus told us, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. You may think that loving one another is easy, but what happens when we do something wrong, or we've not behaved well, or we have said something, or done something that we know is wrong? It gives you that feeling in the pit of your stomach that won't go away. My mum used to call it a niggle. You do not know why you're feeling like you do, but you know it will not go away. So today, we're going to look at these niggles, or problems, or brokenness, or as the Bible calls it, sin. Sin is something we're all guilty of, but it may mean different things to different people. Jesus realised that out of all the people who followed him, there were very different views, even to sin. In the crowds that Jesus preached to were Pharisees. They were teachers of the law. They believed that sinner were, sinners were people like tax collectors and prostitutes. In fact, anyone that did not fit into what they thought was godlike. And this made up the rest of the crowd. The Pharisees could never understand why Jesus would want to associate with these people. But Jesus never worried about guilt by association. Why? Because he thought of people as sinners, he always referred to them as lost or separated. And by that, he meant separated from God. To illustrate his thoughts, he tells a series of stories which explain what it's like to be lost. The first story is found in Luke 15. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? We then go on to read the story of the woman who lost a coin. She searches and searches until she finds it, forgetting everything else to search in earnest for what is missing. This is followed by another parable about two brothers, a behaviour and a misbehaviour. The misbehaviour tells his father that he's had enough of working the lands and wants to be and wants what is his now. So his dad gives him the money and off he goes. The two groups within the crowds that are listening to this story both find this appalling. It's the worst case scenario in their culture. Unlike the story of the lost sheep or coin, this is a different kind of loss. The loser in this case is the father. The father knows where his lost son can be found. So the son goes off and starts living a life of luxury and eventually spends all his money. And you've guessed it, he's left with nothing. He gets to the point when he decides he'll go home and asks to become one of his father's servants. When, he's, when his father sees him coming, he rushes out to meet him and welcomes him back into the family. And he even holds a feast for him in his honour. Let's pause here for a moment. How must the other brother, the behaviour, have felt? When his brother had left, all sorts of thoughts must have gone through his mind. Perhaps he was sad to see him go. Perhaps he thought to himself, why didn't I think of doing that? All the time his brother was away, he was working the land, knowing that one day it would be his. Then out of the blue, his brother returns. And instead of being pleased to see him, all the resentment, the thoughts he had inside, come to the surface. His anger comes out. His brother is being treated like a hero. His father has thrown a big celebration, but all the older brother can do is fume over the unfairness. But he's missed the point. Neither brother wants to go to the party. The one that returns does not feel he deserves it, and the other, because he agrees with him, he doesn't deserve it. The father gives a different perspective. In verse 31 we read, 
My son, the father says, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead, separated and is alive again. He was lost to me and is found. Have you ever felt lost? Not sure where you're going in life, feeling your life is missing something? Those of you that have had that feeling may also question how to find yourself and where do you start? Many may rule God out from the start because they just don't feel worthy of being a follower of Jesus. How can we become a follower of God when we've been so bad? Why would God want me when all I do is mess up? However, God has a different view. No matter what you have done, God loves you. His love is not connected to your behaviour or your character. He does not set out conditions for loving you. He loves you no matter what. People thought that because of what they did or what they were, God would never accept them. But these people were just as hungry to know more about God. So how do we view sin today? Do we think it's an old word, one that's not really used in society today? Or indeed, if it has a different meaning today? This may be the biggest difference between being a Christian and a disciple. The belief that nothing you do will cause God to love you less. God could not love you any more than he does already. Let's remind ourselves of that. God could not love you more, any more than he does already. This is the same attitude that Jesus wants to bring out in his disciples. To look at the person, not the sin. Sin, brokenness in a person should be viewed as someone that is lost. Therefore, in the same way as we go looking for something we have lost, then as Jesus' disciples, we should not get angry at those who are lost. We should go and look for them. So, is your sin lost, brokenness, hurting you and others? Are you not sure what to do with it? First, stop running. Come and find the one who is waiting with his arms open wide for you. He has known you before you were born and is just waiting for you to welcome him into your life. Return to him. Confess the sin, whether it be telling your parents, your spouse. Get back to where you can help, you can get the help and the support you need. End that relationship that is no good for you. Do whatever you must to find the one person in life who won't let you down, who takes you as you are, who won't judge you, who loves you no matter what. Speak to someone. There's plenty of people here at NEBC willing to help. And why not come along to an Alpha course and make that first step? And I can promise you that feeling of loss, that little niggle, will lead to be being healed. It will begin to heal. When someone is baptised, we sing, we cheer, we celebrate because they have been found. And they have reconnected with God. God has stirred in their hearts and his arms are surrounding them and they're no longer lost or broken then that then is a celebration for us all because brothers and sisters that were lost are now found do join us next time as we continue our series of stirring up the revolution let me pray for you our heavenly father as we take steps each day, Lord, to find you. May we realise today, today's the day where you're going to welcome us with open arms. Where we feel lost, where we feel broken, come into our lives and heal, Lord. Help us take the next step. Amen.